And we're live. That was, uh, what's up, everybody? So um, let, let me just, for people that are new, we've been getting a lot of new folks following us, so I just want to have a short caveat, and then I want to reference the comment section um, and talk about a whole bunch of other stuff. So one, this show is called Sunday Night Teacher Talk, and the, the genesis of this is that I, I know, like, like, people ask all the time, do I still get nervous at the beginning of the year? Yeah, I get nervous every year. Every year you feel like they're going to figure it out. I'm a fluke and everyone's going to know it. And then somehow you sneak by another year and you're like, that was the last one. Next year they're really going to realize <laughs> that I have zero idea what I'm doing. Um, so I, uh, I had this idea that on Sunday nights we would have – this kind of chat and just open it up to people. Right. And this is not something I get like a ton of views on. There's not like I get, there's no like kind of monetary benefit to this. It's really just me trying to help folks out. And then all of you helping one another out in the comment section and sharing like what's coming up this week. What are you nervous about? What are you thinking about? Especially this time of the year where a lot of you have gone back to school already. I still have a few weeks left on summer break, but um, it's been very, very busy nonetheless. So that's the idea. What are you thinking about? What are you worried about? What are you wondering about? What ideas do you have or, or inspiration are you kind of looking for? And just type that into the comment section. We'll try and get to all of them that we can. And so, but I just want to say real quick, if you get on here early, apparently the chat works and I thought everyone could see me. And I was like, just talking to my daughter and I, <laughs> I don't know what else. Am I, I, I don't know what was happening, but it makes you just really start to wonder every once in a while when someone hears you, uh, you think someone overhears you, you start thinking like, what was I saying? What did I say? Did I say anything weird? Um, so that was a, that was a thing. But, uh, Thomas, uh, set me straight that no one could see me or hear me. Um, and that was that. So as we're jumping into this, this is what I'm wondering about, uh, this time of the year. I, there's so much stuff online that like on Instagram and everything. And it's, it's kind of funny, right? Like I'm not like against being like the teaching job, uh, the teaching world, like being hilarious. But I think this is a really exciting part of the year. I think this is a really exciting time getting ready to go back into the school year. And I'm wondering what you're the most excited about. So um, if you could just shoot that in the, in the comment section or in the live chat here, like, what are you stoked about? Like what's, what's going on? Um, and then I just want to tell you a couple of things that I have going on or that I think are of interest and folks that I'm trying to help out and stuff like that. Can you look up that girl's Instagram? Cause I didn't do it. My bad. It Talking to the not so secret wife over here. Um, go to the DMS and she was only a couple down. So a couple of things, one, this video, um, so I recently teamed up with this, this company called teachers connect. And a lot of the teacher YouTubers are, are sort of using this, this platform right now, because it's really interesting in that it's an interesting way to kind of like cut through the noise of a lot of social media sites in terms of like, like Instagram, you got to search hashtags and Facebook is the same way. And YouTube, um, there are comment sections and stuff, but this is like a, like a real time kind of like. You put your post out there. You put the colors of your room that you're thinking about. You're putting out um, a situation that you're having in your classroom, and folks can answer and then get right back to you on that. It's just teachers or people that are interested in education. Um, so you, there's a lot of like folks that are in college, and what that does, I think that I think this is the coolest thing about. It. I think this is the cool thing about social in period. Like I didn't start a YouTube channel because I thought I was the greatest. I just started a YouTube channel because I thought I might have something to offer other folks. So what are you like, if you have a year of experience, maybe you can speak to someone that like is struggling or forgets what it was like to have that excitement. Um, so that's, that's kind of uh, who we've been teaming up with lately. And, and that's, that's cool. Um, so you should check it out. Uh, I'll have the link below and you can go check out teachers connect. Um, the other thing is I have a friend that was on uh, Sunday Night Teacher Talk like a couple weeks ago, my friend Vivette and Whitney. And Whitney and Vivette are, they came on, they came on to talk about kind of how do you rally around and care for students who have had family members or do have family members that are currently incarcerated or were incarcerated? Because it's this real sticky situation and it can really 
damage kids like self-esteem and make them like just not like want to share their story and then how that kind of gnaws on you when you have that thing that you can't talk about uh, or you feel like you can't talk about and then how that kind of can run your life and how you feel like you're living the secret life and and how hard it is to go visit someone that's in prison and you know i think the most empowering thing about that is like is like learning to love kids for who they are, not for who we want them to be. Like, instead of like being mad that their dad, like, well, their dad shouldn't have been doing this or their mom shouldn't have been doing this. or Their brother should have made that choice in their life. But how does that affect the kids that had no say in that? Like their dad went to jail maybe, and they had no say in that. And so however you feel about that, I just think that it's a really important topic. And so they are applying to speak at South by Southwest education conference in um, in Texas, uh, this upcoming session of that. And so what they need is for folks to vote for them. And so if you have a, just a second after this feed, I will immediately put those links down below. And if you can link on it and just vote for them. Um, I just think it's a message that's worth getting out. And, and it's, it's a small population of kids, like presumably that just need that love and care and otherwise they just get overlooked many times. And so I'm just trying to like help out some of my friends that are just trying to do really good work in whatever way I can. So that's it. And then I got one more for you and I'm going to jump into these questions and talk about what you're excited about and stuff like that. But I was DMing with this woman the other night who goes by the, what is it? Happiest, happiest hippie gypsy teacher. That is a mouthful, right? <laughs> the happiest hippie gypsy teacher her what's the hurricane thing i don't even remember i was harvey, actually just harvey kane harvey um upset a lot of folks that next last year in texas um one of which was my very good friend uh miss may from one fab teacher so this woman who's just i'm like i don't know how this started we just start dm one another right i'm watching tv or something like that and she sends me a picture of her desk in her room that the students sit on. And like the corner of the desk is all jacked up and it's like broken off. And I'm like, dude, that looks like a safety hazard. Like someone's going to get like damaged by, by this. You're going to have a kid get hurt. And she said, after the hurricane, their, their whole area got hit really hard. And there's just like no money to fix stuff now. Like, so they have all these jacked up desks. And she was like, Oh, so some really lovely woman who I won't use her name because I don't know that she wants to be known on Facebook last year. So that I needed stools for my room. She just bought me four stools of like the exact kind that I want. They were awesome. I have them in my room and I use them for kids that have a hard time sitting in regular desks or are too big for it. Long story short, she has all of these needs in her room. She has an Amazon wish list that she's trying to get fulfilled. And I thought, here's, here's my idea, right? It's a crazy idea. We'll see if this works. There are 52 people watching this right now. Now there's 48 people. Just those other four people were tired of hearing me talk about desks for five minutes. Um, here's my my guess. Somebody in Texas has to be near this woman. Someone's got to have an extra desk, a table, a seat, a stool, a stump of wood that they wouldn't mind giving to this woman who seems like an like a very loving teacher that cares about her students. She actually got a hotel and put her students up in her house so they had somewhere to live so their family could stay together. And she lived in a hotel while that happened. I mean, like that's a level of commitment that is like, it's strong, like the love is there. So if you have an extra desk, if you have a table, if you have a stump of wood, if you have, I don't know, some cash and you could just throw it at that situation and make that problem go away so that her students don't have to get, you know, their legs <laughs> injured by sitting in school. I mean, it should be a safe place, right? And so, like that would be really awesome. And so that's my, uh, it's my nine minute diet try. I don't know. I'm not sure if that that's the real word, but like, let's get into it. That's what I'm talking about. So what do you got wife? What are people up to real quick? I'm just wondering. You got a lot of people. I mean, you All can right. So through. I'm going to scroll through real quick. Um, let's see. Uh, Ella Jane is just busy with school and start last week. Good girl. That sounds like a weird thing to say. I apologize. Um, <laughs> even my daughter's laughing at me. <laughs> Um, we went back to school in Texas and there was no AC in Texas in August. Oh. Without the kids <laughs> and that could be hilarious. Mar, I like that you're my laughing section this evening. Um, 
Let's see. Perfect start. Awesome. What? Let me ask you this because I don't oh, – bro, your, your name always crushes me, but I love you. Um, what is – what was perfect about your start? Uh, hi from California. What's up, lady? How are you? And that is LGB. Thank you for offering this. Hey, man, it's my, it's my pleasure, Kate. I really enjoy doing this. Um, I am the most excited to be teaching AP World History for the first time this year. That is a, there's, Sammy, there's a ton of really fun stuff you could do with that. And from China, he teaches music in China. Um, I am more excited about having new classes, though I'm scared at the same time. Yeah, but then you could like, that just gives you, just. Fun thing sometimes. Um, do you have some questions for me there, dude? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, my teaching partner and I are starting a first full year. I teach math and science and she teaches reading and social studies uh, from L. Jane. That's awesome. I love that you guys split it so that no one is like clearly the lead teacher. Um, overall, I think that's awesome. And then is that my first question? All right, so let's jump in these questions and I'm going to shout some of those more out if I get a chance. Uh, Johnny Chingas, I think that's right. Mr. Reynolds, where have you traveled during your summer break? So I've been doing a lot of teacher conferences, not all of my speak at, but like I just like to go and like network with people and meet cool people because teachers that are willing to go to a conference in the summer, that's a different brand of human being right there. So I went to Princeton to a conference. I went to um, New York City for two conferences. I was at the Hip Hop Ed conference and another one called Ed by Ed. I went to, where else did I go? I went away somewhere, didn't I? Did I fly somewhere? No. I didn't fly anywhere? Yeah, I mean, Chicago. Chicago, oh, ISTE wow. conference. Yeah, but that was, in, so I went there. And then just the Jersey Shore. I've just been busy, like, just trying to, like, okay. Rock YouTube out, which is like a full-time job. My wife works a lot during the day, so I take care of my kids, and I have uh, I'm a not so single dad. So, which really just means you're a dad that's like a single dad that's not single. And this week we're going to Texas. Oh, and then this week I was supposed to go to Texas, but just my wife and my daughter are going to Texas now. But I did just get, land a gig. I'm going to be speaking in San Diego in October. So if anyone's from San Diego. That could be cool. I'm at the Ed Join conference this year. It's like October 3rd through the 5th. Got another question for me? Yeah. LGB is asking, what class rules do you post? Zero. Um, I love that question because I love giving that answer. And let me tell you why. So um, talked about this in my first day of teaching. And I have a whole other video coming out about my expectations and procedures, which I think is different than rules. Um, my rules, I have one rule but it's on my syllabus, which is give respect, get respect. And that's it. Because I assume that as a 15, 14, sometimes 16 year old boy, as a freshman in high school, that you're, you were not raised by wolves, that your parents, that if I called your parents and asked them, um, does your kid have sense? They would say yes. And, and so I just go with that. And, and we kind of figure it out as we go. I don't want to tell kids like, you know, you can't chew gum. There's no cell phones. Don't take off your shoes. Bring a pen with you. Like those, those are all things you should know because you're a human being living in the world for 14 years. Um, and now I get it. Like not everyone knows it, right? They're still going to do goofy stuff. They're still going to touch people and throw things and throw trash and crinkle papers loud during a test and talk during a test. Like those are all things that like you're not allowed to do in my class. But I find that if I start the year, with what we are going to do, with what you can do, with what I'm excited about, it sets a different tone than saying, all right, not messing around. Here's the 50 things that you're not, you know, no diss to Ron Clark, but like, here's the 50 things that like are the situation in our room. And I've seen over time teachers that have all those posters in their rooms. And for some reason, the, the connection, sorry, baby, um, they, they do, it, it, it sets a different tone in their classroom. And so I do have a lot of procedures. Like if you want to go to the bathroom, um, just wait, like, I don't even know that I have a lot of procedures and you don't have to put your homework anywhere special. I have procedures. Like you put all my desks are numbered. Um, and you, you put a number on your paper so that I can put them in order so I can hand them back out. Um, do I have other procedures? 
No, I think it's just like regular stuff. Like, don't talk to me if I'm talking to someone else or like, uh, like, um, be cool to other people in class. Like you're not allowed to be a jerk, but like, I just assume that like, we can, we can, we know these things. And then if I have to address them, I have to address them. But I, I don't like the idea of, let me just, this is my last point on this. I don't like kind of saying a bunch of rules to a bunch of people, um, most of which are probably not going to break them. Right. So it's like always made me feel weird when I was young and someone would be like, all right, you guys are going to this party. I don't want any drinking. There's no doing drugs. I don't want you like the radio has to stay low. Like whatever the thing was like, I'm not going to do all that stuff anyway. Like now I just like look at you like you don't even know who I am. So I give you the benefit of the doubt. And I tell them that I get, tell them exactly what my mom told me growing up. I trust you. So you give me a reason not to trust you. Then I'm still going to love you after that. Like that doesn't go away. My level of care. It's just like, I just might not trust you fully um, after that. I have to keep an eye on you. What do you got, dude? Um, oh, so the wife for life is writing down all these questions tonight. And then in the comment section below or in the um, description, box. description box, I'm going to list all the questions so that like, if you're listening to this and you want to find something like, They'll be in there. I'm not going to timestamp them because I don't have that kind of time on my hands, but at least all the questions, it's an experiment see how it works. Um, Keenan Fitzgerald is asking, I'm a new teacher, was homeschooled my whole life. That is fascinating. Um, just because I've thought a lot about homeschooling and I've gotten a lot of kids that have been homeschooled. Uh, do you think this will make me a bad teacher? Nope. Um, Keenan, I think that like, let's, let's do this little talk real quick. I think that if you truly go into school you care about the job and you care about the students. How could you be a bad teacher? You could never be a bad teacher. You could like, like you're going to show up and care about kids. Um, I was never like, so I teach in West Philadelphia in um, most of my students come from like a single parent home where dad is not around. And I'm not saying all my students, but there's the majority of my students because I know my students do not have a father that's around. Um, admittedly, a lot of my students do not have uh, positive male role models. And I think if you, like, I didn't come from that situation. I came from a two parent home. Like, I mean, I had a stepfather because my father passed away when I was young, but like from the outside, we looked pretty ideal. I had a brother and a sister. We had a dog named Hunter. We didn't lock our doors at night. Like I, I didn't have this half the struggles that my students have, but um, if I show up not as a savior, but as someone who truly cares and just wants to, to do something good in the world, how could you ever go wrong with that? So go in there and know that like you're going to give a shit and like that's going to impact people in a big way. Um, just a shout out to this guy. He, that's the guy that um, Latonia, I think, connected with. Oh, okay. Mr. Clementine Teach. Um, hello, the teacher community. I'm most excited to be a male teacher of color teaching kindergarten. Also embarking on a little teacher tube myself. So this dude, um, I'm going to shout you out, bro. Uh, even though the thing just disappeared, snap. Um, nice. Mr. Clementine Teach, you can check this dude out. I have admittedly not watched your videos yet, and I just want to be honest with everyone, but that's just because I'm super busy and I don't have the time, have the time always. But my good friend Latonya over at uh, Smarty Style shouted you out, and so you've been popping up on my recommended, and I, because I think my TV listens to me okay. and listens to my conversations when I'm talking on the phone with Latonya. Um, and so, look, man. I'm, I get asked all the time, like where, like where, how come there are no teachers of color on, on YouTube or like where, why is there like this minority of folks in that world or in teaching? And so I'm going to shout you out without even having talked to you yet because of my good friend, LaTanya. Um, folks, if you're just wondering what that looks like, like what does a man teaching kindergarten look like? Like check the dude out and, and see what it's like. And then, um, we'll, we'll connect at some point. I'll check out your stuff. And then, uh, but that's it. I think it's really brave of you also to like be putting your stuff online. And don't say that in a sarcastic way or, or anything like it is. It's gutsy because you're putting your mistakes out there. And I think that's awesome. I think that that is a really great move. And I wish I had that footage of myself my first year because it gives you such a great point of reference on how you're growing. Um, Game Pro 88 is saying, what are your tips for students making a good first impression at the beginning of the year? So. Uh, if you are, if you're a student, I would just say, I would, look, te some teachers are going to assume that everyone's great. Everyone's awesome. Right. That's where I try to like enter the classroom in. 
is that everyone don't doesn't start at a, at a hundred with a number, right? Like I don't I don't do that stuff where I put like a hundred percent in my grade book. Um, but uh, there are other teachers that are just going to think like everyone's a piece of crap. Like they just like don't they just like or they look at them like they're like everyone's a suspect right away. I would just go up and introduce yourself. Hey, this is my name. Um, I wouldn't tell them that you're Game Crow 88, but like uh, I would just say, hey, my name's John or Terrence or whatever your name is. And this is what I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I like, I like this class or I struggle in math or I've done well in math in the past, but like this is an area of concern for me. Um, I'm really glad to be in your class this year or I'm looking forward to what we might do. That will undoubtedly cement you in the eyes of that human being. And that teacher will like, I guarantee you, they there's probably zero chance they ever had someone do that to them before. So, or shoot your teachers an email and just say, hey, it could be the same one. Hey, my name is so-and-so. Um, I'm starting in your school this year. Or you're going to be my teacher this year. And I'm really excited about the year or I'm really nervous about the year or this is how I'm feeling. This is what my strengths are. This is what my weaknesses are. And that will give that teacher a window into you and put such a positive spotlight on you. Not because you were like, like grade grubbing or like trying to make an impression in some sort of like weird way, but like just a really honest opinion about who you are and where you think you're coming from. I just think is a really great way to start the year. Um, so that's a great question. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, did you hit something on here? Just no, great. it's not showing the whole question. So I just left it. It's the top one. Oh, my good friend Nayar is saying, so I started a teaching channel and vlogging. I'm too nervous to make it public but I have it unlisted to share with friends and family. Any tips on getting the courage to just put it out there? I would say this. They are no one on YouTube, right? I don't care who it is. It could be Pocketful Primary, Miss May. Like we all don't have it figured out, right? Like, and there are some folks that like started a channel, have one subscriber, 20 subscribers, and then they left it, right? For whatever reason. And they might have had way more tips and tricks and and useful information than anyone else. But I think your situation, um, being who you are, where you're from, and teaching where you do. So Nayar teaches in music in China, for those that don't know. Um, that is fascinating to me. Like, I, you know, here's the thing you have to remember. When you start doing YouTube, social media, like, your ordinary is someone else's extraordinary. What is my normal day, my normal life, my normal interactions with kids is sometimes mind boggling to other folks. Like I get emails about things that I thought really like that was the thing that really like, like blew your mind. Cause to me, it's just like, and I don't mean this in like a, like a narcissistic way. It's like how I handle bathroom passes or how I deal with students and, and the things that they're going through or how I eat lunch with kids. It like blows people's minds because you have no idea where everyone else is coming from. So I think, just keeping it in mind that your ordinary is somebody else's extraordinary, put it out there. And then I, I have had like, and I might be setting myself up for disaster here. I've literally had like what? Three bad comments. Uh, yeah. There's not many. The, there's and we usually have a conversation. With yeah. Them. There's like not a lot of bad comments. And if someone does leave me a crappy comment, I always have the conversation with them anyway. If they try and like come at me about something I said, it's like, well, this is where I'm coming from. And like, I'm trying to be honest and vulnerable. Like, it's, it is weird. Uh, but then you just, just be the person that's weird. Like do weird stuff. It's awesome. It's fun. I hope you do it. And if you do it, please let me know. Cause I'd love to check it out. Which one? Oh, that one. Yeah. Shauna Caldwell is asking. It's not coming up. All of that. I don't know. Why. Oh, anyway, the whole question's not showing up. Yeah, but anyway, do that. All right. So I'll just hold it on there. So it doesn't move away. It won't. Uh, okay. It doesn't I am jumping from student teaching, uh, to a special needs classroom. I have a homeroom and we'll also teach fourth and fifth grade math. Any suggestions? Um, that's a lot. Wait, I'm jumping from student teaching to special needs classroom. And I have a homeroom and we'll also teach fourth and fifth grade math. That's a lot of different stuff. I would say, first of all, don't sign up for anything else this year. When they ask you to chaperone the dance or run the after school program or please plan the prom. Well, it's fourth and fifth grade, so probably not a prom. But anyway, um, the point is, just do that stuff. My second suggestion would be work with other people that are doing similar things. Do not try to recreate the wheel. It is such a bad idea that teachers get in their head all the time that like 
They have to be the first one that ever did this like one thing. They have to be the first one that came up with a special lesson. When in reality, you can steal stuff. Go on my YouTube channel, steal anything you want. You don't have to give me any credit for it because I've stolen 100 things from 100 other teachers as well. And then because you're doing it for the benefit of the kids. Like you're not winning life necessarily because you stole stuff or like because you made something up that was new instead of like something that was like that you got from someone else. I think the teaching community should be a community that shares things with one another. And there is a space for things like teachers pay teachers and other resources like that, where like someone might've created a unit that took them a long time and they want to like make some money because they put their time and, and hard work into it. But there's tons of free stuff. And then work with the teachers that are in your school. Find someone. Maybe, um, Sean, someone in the comment section now like sees you and they teach that same thing and do it. The other thing is I special ed is so much my jam. I can't even stand it because, because I think my jam is really kids that are often overlooked, kids that are not said hello to, that no one eats lunch with, that no one takes the time to listen to because they're slow or they don't make eye contact. or And I mean slow like – in um, the sense that like when they tell you a story, it takes a long time. And you're like, like Mr. Rogers always spoke like that. And you watch his, his interviews and you're like, bro, but I want to put it on times two speed. But anyway, it's like those are kids that like often, not always, are just kind of overlooked or misunderstood or need someone to just let them know that they're there. And whether you're special ed or not, Though that's my jam. So like, just go in there and just care for kids. Like just show up, be caring. Um, and, and like, just, I just think get hyper focused on, on what you're trying to do and what you want to accomplish. Um, but do that with working with other people and be it, be a team player. That's what I would do. What do you got wife? So Rima, I can't see her other first part of her question. Okay. Like it looks like it was retracted by her. Oh. But it, basically, it's just tips for teaching third grade. Um, Rima, I think your first part of your question got erased or something like that. So this is uh, Rima Hamo. You know, if you watch my channel, you just I, – I feel like I have to keep explaining this to people, but I just – Too many people on there. So. I can't say names right. I don't know what's wrong with me. Um, she says, I'll be teaching for the first time third grade. Do I have any tips? Um, I do. I, I always have tips for first year teachers and they usually, I try and say different ones. So if you watch a bunch of my content, I'm not saying the same thing over and over again, but I'd say one, yo, have fun, right? Like you got into this job, not because it was going to be a drag. What's that? I can't write off. Oh, the right oh the writing the question thing is not working out. All right. Well, you know, we try, we try it. <laughs> omit that part. Um, I think have fun. There's so much stress at the beginning of the year. Everyone wants to be perfect. Everyone wants to get just right. Everyone's had a Pinterest classroom and I'm behind all that. I love my classroom. I want to just have like, you know, you want to like look fresh and like have your classroom look fresh and like be excited. But like, I think the level of fun gets lost. Like those kids are just as nervous. Even if you're teaching older kids, they're nervous walking in back into school that year also. What if they got some weird haircut over the summer? What if they got hurt what and they have like a I don't know stitches or like they got braces over the summer or they're just awkward in social settings like you could be the one that just shows up says what's up and like lets them feel comfortable let them feel like you're stoked for the year that like they got they won the lottery right they won the lottery coming into your class because you will care for them you will have the best lessons you will be excited you will serve cereal sometimes. I have this new idea this year for making pancakes one day. Might be a little bit messy. ridiculous and messy, but I mean, that's like a memory no one's ever going to forget. Plus it makes it smell really good in my room. Um, but I think that that's my number one thing. The second thing, I just said this to somebody else, do not sign up for a thousand things. The school knows you're new know you're passionate and they know that miss sally down the hall that's been teaching for the last 30 years she doesn't really like to sign up for anything anymore so they get her for bus duty and dance stuff and selling you know snacks at the pta festival and like working the basketball games as something don't sign up for all that stuff if you're passionate about it so there's this guy let me say it like this I, there's and let me say it like this there's room and I get that you have to be a team player, that you have to do things that you don't want to do sometimes. But I really think that if you can burn yourself out if you do too much. 
someone named Derek Sivers, who started this company called CD Baby, I read his book last year, said, when you're asked a question about anything in life, if your answer is not hell yes, then don't do it, right? So again, if someone says, hey, do you want to like assist and coach the basketball team and you won't give a crap about basketball, then if your answer is not hell yes, then don't do it. Unless it's like, you know, if you feel like you're helping someone out, like put yourself out of your comfort zone, help them, help them do it out. But like um, that, that's kind of my go-to for, for things. So have a lot of fun and don't say yes to everything because that's going to allow you time to really hone your craft, to really work on that, to really recover from that stuff this year. And it's, it'll put you in a better situation. Um, Kayla Crozier, what's up? Kayla Crozier. Um, Kayla Crozier, you're going to come Did Mr. Matero just give us $120? How's that work? I don't, I don't think that, is that works a thing? for us. I have no idea. Is that a thing, man? Uh, anyway. Um, Thanks. Uh, if that were, I don't know what <laughs> that is. If you really did that. Or is it like, <laughs> imagine, like, I get to buy stuff on Candy Crush? Um, do you do Marzano? My mom is currently getting her master's in Marzano, uh, and I am just brainwashed about this dude. Uh, I don't, somebody brought that up lately. I don't know what It's like a thing. I don't know what that is. Uh, I'm undereducated in that area. Uh, so this is what I'm gonna do, Kayla Crozier. I'm gonna I'm gonna, look can you look? Are you gonna look it up now? Mm -hmm. All right, do it. That's a, you're yeah. great. You're like my producer. I'm like the guy on um, Joe Rogan that nobody sees. You're the, the Joe screen. Rogan guy, really Jamie. Right. He just sits on the side. Um, any suggestions for classroom library resources? I do. So this is Ariel Middle Middleton as asking this. Um, suggestion for classroom library resources? I would say. Crap. What is that link that Randy told me to go to the other night? Stop. Here's what I say. I'm gonna I'm gonna send I'm gonna send you to other people, right? One at Randy Rebio. I'll put it in the section below. This is my friend Randy. He's a young adult author. He he like uh like reviews books, like young adult books, and he knows all books. That's who I ask. It so is. like if I don't know the answer to your question, that's who I'm gonna ask. And I'm gonna spell it wrong though. Can you? Oh. Because it's crazy neat spelling. You know me. I don't get know. Lost. you got to read that guy's book to figure it out. All right. It's a model so we'll teaching. check it out. So my friend Randy does that. Um, him up on Twitter if you, so let me say this. If you want suggestions for your classroom library, shoot me an email, realrapidtherounds uh, at gmail.com. And I'll send you my suggestions. Um, I have a couple of videos that I made about this, like what were the books I ordered last year um, and why I ordered them. My friend Randy gives me suggestions all the time. And my good friend, Mr. Witter, who works at my school, he's the head of curriculum. He always is sending me like ideas. So I'll just shoot all that stuff your way and then you will have it. Also, here's my other answer to that. Ask your students what they want to read. Like if you have some money to order stuff or if you're willing to order stuff, like find kids that are reluctant readers and then order them things. The other thing I would say to do, I'm going to try and get my school to do this. So if you're watching uh, Miss List, who is my department head, um, expect this question. I'm looking to get uh, an Audible account for my classroom this year that the students can listen to. Because when I have like dyslexic students or when I have really reluctant readers or kids that are like far below grade level, I really just want you to read. And reading with your ears is just as useful as reading with your eyes. And people that say no, they are crazy because you know, I had my friend uh, Joellen on here the other week at, when we did the teacher talk live a couple weeks ago, and she was talking about dyslexia, and she was saying how that is like getting kids with dyslexia audiobooks is a really easy way to like help those kids because they don't have to they don't have to just sit there and suffer through. They can love it, and if you read something like Neil Gaiman's um, yeah. Graveyard Book, right, as I was called, it's it's like. The, the short of the, that point is audiobooks nowadays are so well produced that it's like a joy to listen to them. So that's what I would do also. That's my that's my idea. Um, oh, Randy Riabai is, uh, I'm going to just put him up here. This dude right here. It's there you go, bright. Riabai. Oh, it's too bright. That's a spelling. Um, I could have just typed it in. It's not bad. Well, is it? No, just maybe type it. Oh, I'll just type it in. All right. Spell it for me. Sorry, this is a, a low point in the show right now, but Randy. we're going to try. R-A-N-D-Y. Uh, they are R-I-B-A-Y. R-I-B-A-Y. Um, so follow him on Twitter 
and you will see all kinds of great stuff on what you should get for your classroom. Did that go up there? Nope. I don't know what that was. All right, that was a loss. Really, like, hang in there, people. I'm, 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 I'm helping trying to make this work. All right, I think that went up there. Yeah, it did. Dude, it totally went in there. Watch. It's totally at the bottom. Bam. All right. Um, what do you got for me? Next question. I'm on fire tonight. Uh, Amanda Teaches is asking, uh, hey, how do you handle students checking out your personal books? All the students that have checked out books would not, never return to me. Girl, I know that situation. Um, how do you hold them responsible for when they lose them? So we're getting this thing at school this year. And as soon as I get it, I'm going to do a video on it. Because I don't even remember what it is and I've not used it yet. But uh, teachers at my school have gotten like, I don't know if it's an app or if it's like a little gadget. I think it's a gadget for your room. And it stays in there and you can scan the barcode. And then you like, it goes in and you can like each somehow like organizes like attaches a kid's name to the book that they took out of your room, just like they would at like a public library. And you can track who has stuff. And then if they don't turn it in, I charge $10 flat rate if you don't return a book to me. Or if you, I get a book and it's super jacked up, like you ate cereal over it and they're all those Captain Crunch stuck between the pages. Um, so that's a really quick fix for that. I also just do, I have a sign out sheet that I made um, that I'd be happy to send anyone to. So if you want to just shoot me an email, I'll send you that sign out sheet. It's real simple, has a spot, it says like book name, who you are, what the date that it went out. And then when you give the book back, I have to stand, stand it in or oh, so uh, put it in. So hold on one second. Sorry. Don't kill my flow. Um, <laughs> I, you have to put it in a milk crate that says return books here. And then I return those or one of my teaching assistants returns those. Uh, so that you're not like writing your name back in without giving me your book back because you do lose a lot of books that way. What did someone say? Yeah, someone said it. Uh, team Yazer Beam is saying uh, to you, Amanda, that teaches books, teaches books, teachers books source. Um, you can scan books in and out from your phone. Yeah, so it's like the technology is there. Uh, I just say use it. Is that what you say? Uh, do you have another question for me? Do you? I'm have finding. To... I've been meeting. Uh, all right. So I'm going to say hi to people while I'm waiting. Okay. Just, uh, I know. I love you. Um, Sean <laughs> Alexander. Yeah. What's up, man? Sean Alexander looked like the uh, lieutenant from The Wire. Um, Jessica. Hello from Cambodia. Dude, that just made my night. Hello from Cambodia. Oh, That's awesome. Uh, top one. Mike Keenan is asking. Have you ever had multiple classrooms during the day? Any advice? Two rooms for the next year. Luckily, they're next door. Uh, I have. And so, and I didn't handle it well because I like my room. I like my space. I like setting it up. I like, I mean, if anyone's seen my classroom, like I take a lot of pride in my classroom. I mean, we're there more than we're in our own homes a lot of times. You spend time decorating your home. Why wouldn't you do it to your classroom? Here's what I would ask. Um, I've since had this idea, and my friend Taz did this last year, where like, he and another sh teacher shared a room for the year. Oh, here comes the whole neighborhood. So the dog's going to bark. Kids are going to come in. It's going to be loud for a second, but we'll get past that. So uh, they just each took a side of the room. And so like one person had like the back wall, the front wall, and one whole side. And then the other teacher did the same on their side. And it was kind of a fun way to see like two different teachers occupying the same space but like what their kind of flavor was. I think it kind of ups your game in terms of like classroom decor also because you see someone else like do something dope. You want to do something dope also. Um, but other times I've just like my friend uh, Joel and I did, um, we like shared a room one time and we just kind of like cohabitated the room and like he kind of set up his stuff and then I went in and I was like, all right, anything you don't want me to do. And I just did everything that I, I could. And so, and that's a fun idea. Like, it would be kind of fun even if like four teachers shared a room and you each got a wall or something like that to make your own, to make it super cool. And that would be it. Now, here, let me just share this one last thing with you, Mike. Um, there are, I've shared rooms with people that are a hot mess. And I mean hot mess like dude brought in loaves of bread to make peanut butter and jellies with other students and then stuff got all over my room. And I don't fault that teacher for that because some people are just messier than others. Some people are like ridiculously organized and, and clean. I'm not saying I'm that dude, so I might be that dude. But um, 
I would have that conversation about like classroom expectations. I like when my room's neat and clean because I think it gives a sense of um, of peace to the room. Like the kids come in and there's not stuff everywhere and trash on the floor. And so, and also my room stays cleaner the cleaner I keep it because no one wants to be the one dude that threw trash on the floor. Because then you have all those little like, you know, those things from the notebook that float all over the floor, those little pieces of paper. Uh, who's this, Jessica? All right, so Jessica, woo, Lorenzi, I'm gonna say that's right. Jessica Lorenzi, this is coming for you. Uh, any tips for students' classrooms with larger ability ranges? I teach in a small school and I'm teaching two, three, four language classes and a two, four, five, uh, I'm gonna do SS slash SCI class. So here's my answer to that question. Um, I think there's a lot you could do. And I think some of that is going to look like grouping kit. What are you laughing so hard at over family. there? You're so like awesome. losing your mind over there. I'm in the middle, of, like I'm trying to get I'm real. Really sorry. Jessica's asking a question. Sorry, Jessica, I'm on. sorry. I'm just kidding. Um, so th this is how I did last year. Last year I took all classes that were like the school's lowest readers or kids that were the biggest behavioral problems. And the way that I handled that was by grouping them um, so sometimes it's always different. You're never doing like the same thing every day. Some days they're groups in those groups. I might have three kids, right? Never four. Cause there's always that one kid doesn't do anything, right? You need just three, sometimes even two and they read aloud together. And so that makes it a safer space. They're not reading aloud in front of the whole class. You have one like goodish reader and one struggling ish reader and put them together um, or have like a really good reader, a like a middle of the road re reader and then someone who's struggling and then they can work together and help one another move through what they're reading. And it really, really helps. I think also um, having activities that are going to support the strengths of the students that are struggling. So someone comes in and they might suck at reading. They're on a way low reading level and you're trying to figure out like you want them to feel empowered. You want them to be excited about coming to class. So what you do is like you find out, Oh, they're good at art or, clay or making stick bot videos. I don't know. Um, and you take that strength and you build it into the class somehow. Like, all right, we're going to do a project where this kid's going to crush because he knows a little bit of video editing, even if they're young. I mean, my daughter makes really cool videos. And so that then when there's something that they're, you know, so maybe the kid that's great at reading, like sucks at art and he's, his drawings look like hot mess. Um, it's building in that, that, that sense of self-esteem for that student that's struggling. And then when they have to do the reading, look, bro, like this just isn't your like strong suit yet. But just like you helped that other kid out with the project, he's going to help you out with this and we're going to grow together and we're going to work as a team to get there. I think that's really empowering also. And then also um, build in some level of independent reading, right? No matter how young your students are, they could do like, um, what's the learning online thing that we liked? For reading, reading. Learning, alley. learning alley you could do something like that yeah, you do something like that. yeah but they have schools that'll pay for oh, this stuff or bookshare. Uh, or bookshare or uh audible all these different sort of tools that you could use so that kids could listen to something that's on their level or read something that's on their level or get like one of those you know if you have money for classroom technology like the pens that help read the book to you and stuff like that there's a lot of resources you like have, that uh, where Marzella, like you can, pick up, you can pick a certain like um, reading level for your students at an article. So it's still like not cool. like a fourth grade level, but you can have it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The words are like adjusted. Yeah. For, so what they do is like something like Newzella, like they'll take here. Vocabulary or the length of the sentences and stuff like that. So that's essentially the same thing. Everyone's getting papers hand out looks exactly the same but those dudes that are struggling are like really getting something that they need and the there kids that are advanced are really getting something that they need as well all right what do we got teacher geek teacher geek what's up um the question is i'm in my student teaching year i'm planning on vlogging the experience so that i can see my growth and prepare for the edtpa um what advice do you have for student teachers so one, I think that would be really interesting to vlog, but but uh, make sure you check in with your school and with your cooperating teacher. Make sure that like kids aren't put out um, and 
Like you don't want to put anyone's face on the internet without permission. Uh, and so that's just a good practice. Um, my friend, um, Bridget at the lettered classroom does a lot of like her kids hands or feet and stuff like that. And so their faces aren't on there. There's all kinds of ways about that. Yeah. Back of the head, all that kind of stuff. Um, so advice for student teachers, I would say this one, be yourself. Do not wait to be yourself, right? Like don't try and like be who the teacher in the classroom is not saying you should try and better them or anything like that, but just like be authentic to who you are. Um, if you want to smile on the first day, smile on the first day. If you are typically more reserved or strict than that, like don't try and like put on a happy face if you're not like, you know, if you're not that person. Um, the other thing is start making connections with students on the first day. Be in the hallway. Be visible as much as possible, which um, – so this is how you build relationships. You're just around more than other people are. So kids get – used to just seeing your face in the hallway, at the door when they come in, at the door when they leave, at the basketball game, at the football game, at practice, at the play tryouts, wherever you can be seen, um, you become more visible and that makes people feel more comfortable around you. And so if something happens, they will come to you. And then just asking kids, ask them about themselves. Don't be afraid to share about yourself, but really ask questions like, what's your favorite movie? What'd you see this summer? Where'd you go? Um, what are you excited about this year? What are you nervous about? Kids will tell you all kinds of crazy stuff. And that starts building those relationships. And I mean, on my channel, I'm all about the relationships. Like that's my jam and that's what I want. Um, I think that helps the most. What's up, son? Boy just came in. Um, they said, oh, Taylor C. Taylor C said, I got my ass handed to me last week. Last year, I subbed and I felt like a rock star. But this year, I took the full-time position at a rough school and I didn't have to classroom – and I didn't have to do classroom management last year. Um, bam. I love this question, right? And, and not that I love that you went through that situation. That is not it at all. Uh, I just love it because – I feel like a lot of people are feeling like this right now. And I actually want, I'm going to make a video this week um, about this kind of thing. Like, what do you do when the first week comes by and you just feel like that you got the crap kicked out of you? Um, one, I will say this, and this is, maybe you want to hear this, maybe you don't. Teaching is a craft, right? I've said this a lot of times before. And what I mean by that is that you wouldn't have taken piano lessons last week, not done very well and been like, you know what? Hell with this given up piano. I just think it's not, it's not for me. I'm just not getting it fast enough. And because you realize that like playing piano is like a lot of, there's a lot of these little nuances you have to learn. Like, what do you do if a kid does this? What do I do if a kid does this? What do I do if a kid does this? And so you learn those over time because over time you've had like the majority of your kids, like you've seen it before. Some kid shows up first day of class, tries to pull some nonsense and then looks at you like, yeah, bitch, you never seen that before. And you're just like, Pfft. Bro, come on, man. I've, I've taught you 10 times already. And I know exactly how I'm going to handle this situation. And it almost becomes like a game. So just realize that. The other thing is this. Whoever you're having a problem with, whatever your situation is, that that kid is doing that behavior for a reason. Now, maybe they're, you know, it, it's a rough school. So, like, I don't, I don't know what that, what that potentially means, right? Like, it, it does it mean, like, they're in, like, a neighborhood that doesn't have teachers that stick around. Maybe their parents don't stick around. Maybe you have kids in foster care. Maybe you teach in a school where like students um, don't speak English as a second language. So it makes the learning a, a struggle in class. But I would say this, all, everyone has a story. And when you learn that story, it makes what they're doing not acceptable. It makes it understandable sometimes. And so what that means is you're writing that down. Oh, I thought you were going to write that down because I felt pretty good about that quote. Um, they, I think what happens is you find out that, you know, Jason is like just being a jackass every day. He's carrying on, he's touching other kids hair and poking people with pencils and throwing things and asking to go to the bathroom 75 times and kicking kids under his desk. But then you take the time, you make Jason eat lunch with you, or you eat lunch with him, or you just talk to him. Um, and I'll quote that to you later. <laughs> and, uh, and so you, when you find out that Jason's dad is in prison, that his brother died over the summer, that he had a really rough year last year because um, he was in foster care. 
it doesn't make it okay that he's doing it. It's still not okay to stab other kids with pencils. Maybe you should write that down. Um, but what it does is it makes it understandable. Like you're, you're, what you're doing is you are not sure what to do with your anger, with your hostility, with your life circumstances, and then you take those out in another way. And this isn't just for kids in like poor schools. This is like, you know, Kevin, whose parents are really wealthy, they leave him alone all the time because mom goes out to the with her friends all day and dad works like 80 hours a week and no one ever pays attention to Kevin. So he likes starting fires in the bathroom sink or something like that. He likes stealing things from from teachers and then getting caught so that he gets in trouble because then he gets attention that he's always looking for. Like these are real things that kids deal with. And so that's hard. It's hard walking in on Monday morning when everyone was a jackass last week. But if you can remember that and then make yourself talk to these kids, even the kids that's the worst. Then the other thing, third piece of advice, and I'm going to move on. There are kids in your class that are not being jerk offs, right? That are not, that are being totally cool, or they are like just a little bit like that. Those kids get overlooked all the time. Make it a point tomorrow to help those kids feel seen, and then that is a win for you, right? You're like building in the easier wins, not just looking for the kid who's the biggest behavioral issue, right? You're looking for the kid that no one else is noticing, that sits in the back of the class, has been through eight classes already today, it's already the first end of the week of school, and he hates it because no one knows he's alive, that no one wants to help teach him, that no one cares about what he thinks because Tim friggin' answers every single question and Pete wants to read every single time you read in class, but like that dude, no one looks at. Make it a point, and then you. what will happen is, those dudes, I 100%, and I'm telling you this will happen, We'll start gravitating towards you. We'll start hanging out in your classroom. We'll make, we'll give you insight on other dudes, or we'll make your self-esteem get built up because you're seeing that you're actually doing something for someone. That's who you need to focus on. And that's how I would view coming into school next week. That was a very long answer, but I feel good uh, about it. Naturally, Niana, you could have changed your name. It's just a uh, oh, right. word. Um, real quick, that last guy that asked me a question, I forget what your name is because I can't remember names. Um, if you have a very specific question, there's a particular kid, you're not sure what to do about it, just shoot me an email and I'll try and get an answer back to you very quickly um, to try and help you out with what a situation is. Because sometimes like a particular advice helps with a particular situation. Uh, my girl, naturally, Niani, who changed her name to Wrapped in Education, um, she got a job. Nice. That's, I thought you were doing the tutoring, like mentorship thing. So I'm wondering what that looks like. So, uh, I would like to know more about what's going on with that situation, but, um, wrapped in education. That's a cool YouTube channel. You should check it out. She's my friend. I met her in Chicago this summer and she is a lovely human being. Uh, what do you got? Just look down. The oh, just look down. Oh, make me do the work now. I, I'm not bad. Not bad. Uh, Shauna Caldwell is saying, this is my first classroom. I also working on my doctorate took the position because it's my son's school, special place in my heart. Oh, Fantastic. Um, we talked about it before. This name is, I apologize in advance. Maybe I get it right and I win a trophy. Um, Laisa? La, Laisa? L-A-I-S-A. -A. Um, I apologize for not. It's actually a very pretty looking name. Um, it says, hi, I know this may not fit your list of topics in the chat, but I'm doing a reading assignment for ninth grade and I want to know how the setting of a novel impacts the characters. Um, are you trying to get answers? Are you trying to like take my answer and put it on your paper? Um, I'm not going to give you a full answer, but I'm going to tell you this, that the set, think about the setting that you live in, right? And how that impacted you growing up. And then because you could take your exact situ, like, Maybe if you had grown up somewhere else, it would have impacted your situation much, much differently, right? If the, and then, so that sometimes the setting does really impact it. And sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's like, you know, um, or like, so if I think of this, there's a really, really great book called, that I'm going to forget the name of. Oh, uh, Dave Edgar's book about. Um, oh, you shall not have lost it. No, The Flood in After Katrina. Oh, I don't Where it was like the, 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 the it's a true story about this guy who um, takes a canoe out so it's rescuing people after Katrina and at first it is like he's like saving people and it's awesome there's like old people and dogs and he's helping them out and stuff and then he starts getting profiled because he's Muslim 
and he starts getting like he gets arrested and all this awful stuff happens to him. That's not a spoiler alert. Everybody knows this part. Um, and so the setting was crucial because like if he lived in France and they never had a flood, that story would have never been written. But because he was in that place at that time, it totally impacted the story. So that's that's what I would give it a go off of. I'm not even sure that's helpful, but that was fun to talk about. Looking for a question? Yeah, not. Can you sing a song while waiting? Uh, Indie Kitty, Indie Kitty, what's up? I haven't seen you on here, I think, in a while, or maybe I have, and I just don't remember. But uh, is saying, how do you handle quiet kids who work hard but keep their heads down? You know I, how I handle them? I make them hang out with me and I talk with them. So let, let me give you this story. Um, last year, I have a student. And I'm not sharing it like this is like if this kid watches this or his parents, like I'm, I'm not using anyone's name. So like, like it's totally safe. Um, and I've had kids like this before. Have a student that comes in, moves into the school. He's in this part of the city for the first time in his life. Very, very quiet, very shy, um, bright kid, but um, struggles in, in English. Right. And his mom comes in and tells me this. She's very nervous about him. And she says he will never talk. He doesn't talk to anyone. I don't know like how you're going to connect with him. Like, but I just want you to know, like, he's not being rude. He just doesn't talk to anyone. I said, well, that's like unacceptable. Like I, and not because like, if you don't want to talk to me, whatever, but I don't want you to like feel alone in school. I don't want you to feel like no one cares about you. Like that's, that, that's unacceptable to me. So I said, I'm telling you right now, cause his mom was sad. Like she was crying at back to school night. Cause she was very upset about this. And I said, I want you to know, that I'm going to do everything in my power that, that at the end of this week, I'm going to have your son feeling better about school, right? Like he, you, you won't have to worry about him. Like you can worry about math or something like that. Um, so he comes in the next day and he's eating lunch downstairs by himself. I have one of my homies go downstairs and get him and invite him up to my room. And I just bring him in. Hey man, you can just be here. You don't have to talk to anybody. You can just leave your earbuds in. You can play a game on your phone. You can sit in the corner. You don't have to talk to anybody, right? Just it's a safe space. It's better than being in the dining hall, which gets a little loud and crazy sometimes. Okay, just doesn't really say anything. Goes and sits in the corner, sits down, eats his lunch. His mom Mac makes his lunch, so he doesn't have to go downstairs to the dining hall anymore. Just chills every day. The next day, or chills that day. The next day, he comes in. I go, hey man, I'm glad you came back. Like uh, it was a good evening in here yesterday. Like a little bit more calm. Red. Um, how was, uh, what was the best part of your day yesterday? What was the worst part of your day? Or um, I see that like, I just oversaw like on your phone or like heard you like, or saw what you were looking at or watching or whatever. Um, is it a jam? Like that's your number one show or whatever. Just find these little things. I start talking to him. By the end of the week, no kidding. I knew everything about this dude. Like he, I knew about his family situation, where he lived, why he moved there, what was going on teachers that he liked, teachers that were a problem for him, his friends, what he thought of other kids in the school, that he like played instruments and had this really like creative, um, interesting side to him, all because I just talked to him about regular stuff, not, not feelings stuff, not anything that was going to push you off or push you away, regular things that you just talk to kids about. It builds trust and they will inevitably, like you start giving them more power in class, like Hey, can you hand stuff out for me? And it just makes them feel more comfortable. Here's the other thing. Here's the other tricky thing. I know this is a long answer. Full long answers tonight. Um, they, it's how I roll. You then find someone who is a great example of a human being. Some kid that's a little bit louder. Some kid that has a little bit more self-esteem. But they're a good person. And then at some point you go, hey, John, um, I, you were talking about Star Wars the other day. Yo, Pete, come here real quick, man. Like, did you know John like really loves Star Wars too? He's really stoked about the whatever or like whatever it is, right? Um, and you you start the conversation between them and then you slowly disappear into the distance, leaving them to talk. And before you know it, you helped that kid make a friend with someone who's worth being a friend with. And that's how I handle that situation. What's next, wife? Right there. Bam! Rachel Applewood. <sighs> <laughs> Aptowitz, Aptowitz. Rachel, I've seen your name on here before, I think, and I just still don't know how to say it. Um, hi, Reynolds. I'm a mechanical engineer who's coached first robotics teams in the past few years and thinking about a career switch into teaching. Any tips of career change, um, career changing YouTubers to check out? 
who's changed careers? I don't think anybody. And has talked about it. I don't think anybody. Has. I know Darren has. Uh, Darren uh, Naki Kahara, because uh, that's because I can't say his name right either. Um, I know he was like an entrepreneur, like a small business owner, and then switched into teaching when he was like 40 or something like that. Um, but it, I don't know who else, YouTuber wise. I don't know. If anyone knows a YouTuber or someone on Twitter or Instagram that has switched gears um, like a little bit later in life, I will say this though, uh, Rachel, that people that I know that have done all kinds of cool stuff and then they start teaching what you really, I'm going to take a, take a line from, um, Jesse, I forget what his name is now. Oh my gosh. I'm like literally the worst with names. Um, there's a guy that wrote a book called like living with seal. He talks about your life resume. And I find that folks that have a life resume that's fuller, right? Because they've like done stuff for the last 20 years. They've had other jobs, traveled the world, adopted children, like got married, got divorced, like whatever your situation is, you've had more life experience. You are bringing all of that to the classroom with you. And so I just think that that is like such a great thing that like is exciting to be able to say like, you know, you are, you have done great stuff or struggled, or you know what it's like to fail. You know what it's like to like break and then build yourself back up, you bring all that to the classroom with you. And I just think that's really great. That's not a, that's not a diss to anyone that's 22 and starting out teaching. I think it's like those folks have the, the power of youth and, and energy and like not being like beat down by the world maybe yet. Um, the rest of us, like I didn't start teaching until I was 27, which at that point felt really old to me. But um, I think you just bring all that great life experience with you. So that's that's what I would, how I would look at it. Am I going on the top one? Mm -hmm. Maddie Kitts is saying, any lesson plan advice? I feel like I'm spending so much time relating lesson plans and never use them. I can't be the only one. You are 100% not the only one, Maddie. Uh, Here's what you do, whatever you're teaching, right? Like the great Gatsby, whatever it is, right? Type in um, awesome, great Gatsby lesson or the best great Gatsby lesson. And then you will find all kinds of crap based on that. But no one's going to put the run of the mill, boring, crappy lesson plan online and put great at the beginning of it. If it's not great, it's only folks that feel super stoked about what they're doing steal things from others, right? Uh, there's another really Stop great book. The word steal. I am going to use it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say why now. There's a great book by this guy, Austin Cleon, who wrote a book called Steal Like an Artist. And I think it, um, it was Pablo Picasso that said, like, good artists borrow, great artists steal. And so you take other ideas from other people and then use them, blend them in. Maybe it just fills in the holes in your lesson plan. Maybe it helps, inspires you to think of something new but don't try to recreate the wheel. I also use a site called teachers.net and teachers.net is um, Harry Wong's site, uh, but they have like a, a blog section or something where you can search different things and then folks have like links to unit plans and um, lesson plans and all that stuff. So don't, that, that would be my biggest piece of advice is don't try and start from scratch, uh, but do a really good job this year because next year, hopefully you get to use all that stuff again and then it's way less taxing. And last piece of advice, when, after you teach it, keep little tiny notes. This didn't work. This could have been better. I should have approached this particular lesson this way. And then next year you'll be like more informed into like um, what worked and what didn't work. Kafupal, there's my girl, Kafupal land. Um, she has a YouTube channel also, and she is the only other, as far as I know, the only other high school YouTuber um, teacher. I think that I said those out of order, but whatever. Um, Kafupal saying, hey, are you using your new Diva Lamp light ring? I am using my new Diva Lamp light ring. Well, I got a light ring, diva, which makes my, it's it's a light. whatever. I thought it was a Diva light ring. Oh, okay, it's so halo. It, halo, whatever. But it like makes me have this crazy glow and my eyes get circles in them sometimes. Um, <laughs> But I like it. It's really nice, especially since it's starting to get darker earlier. One swim chick. One swim chick. Um, who's been on here? Yes. She's been on here from like the from the jump. Uh, how intense organized are you when it comes to planning lessons daily for the rest of the month? So I do. Uh, I do five weeks in advance. So I get. I literally go on like timeanddate.com or something like that, and you print out free calendars, and then I fill in the calendar. This is my quick tip on how to do lesson plans. 
fill in all the days that you're going to miss, right? You have like, you have to be out for something. You have jury duty. There's a play. You're going on a trip, whatever it is, right? Fill all that crap in. There's election day or something like that. Um, and then reverse engineer. What, what do I want them to know at the end? And what does that assessment look like? And then what day am I starting on? And then what that does is if I'm reading, I don't know, uh, To Kill a Mockingbird in class, I have to figure out in five weeks, how many pages does that mean a week? How many pages does that mean a day that the students have to read? Does that mean I'm reading three or four pages in class and they're reading 10 for homework? Like what does the math look like? Like that's how you're reverse engineering it. And then what do I do? every Monday. So every Monday I do vocab and then every Friday there's a vocab test. So I write those on there as well. And then how am I going to get from that beginning vocab part to the closing vocab part? Um, do I want to have a speaker come in during that time? Do I want them to speak about the book? Like you start sort of filling in those little boxes and then that gives me an overview. And then I can more intensely plan for the week after I know that I need to get from here to here, right? It's like if I want to run like Oh, that's a really good metaphor. That's that metaphor stuff. I would just say that's kind of like my basic, like how I get started. And then I like fill in the gaps from there. Um, top one, Chesney Boer. I think I said that right. Cute dog in your uh, profile picture there. Any advice to someone who is going to be teaching seventh grade LA and junior English? Oh my gosh, what are these gaps that you guys have to teach? Like seventh grade to juniors? Um, at the same time, how do you manage teaching materials and staying organized at two different schools? Like you're going from one school to another. Um, what would I say about that? Don't do it. I would say, <laughs> oh, man, come on. It's the challenge. I've had, so I've done this before. I've taught like last year I taught freshmen and sophomores and uh, my hip hop elective, which is all grades. And then I've done things like um, taught all freshmen. I taught three freshman classes. might be advice that seems like no duh but teachers try to overcomplicate stuff all the time they like they come up with these crazy lesson plans that have a thousand moving pieces and i and and the idea there is that those are fun and i've i have those lesson plans but they are sacred now they're not all the time i think what brings the interest sometimes the class is not your lesson plan and not what like the fact that you're like breathing fire and juggling at the same time but who you are, what you bring to the class. What is it like? Are you excited about the lesson? Can you make this mundane task kind of fun because you are reading uh, in, I don't know, my students call it being extra. You're reading in a way that seems extra to your students. You are playing music behind what you're reading. You start class with music. You start with a simple conversation about regular stuff. Like um, you, like, what is it that, what's this kind of like special secret dust that you're sprinkling on your on your lesson that just takes a regular lesson to a great lesson or at least uh, like lets the kids enjoy being in your class and so that's how i would best do that i would take simple lesson plans and then work with someone else that's teaching 11th grade english if you can or someone else that's teaching seventh grade english um or just mention like someone go what's her name because i don't remember that last teacher if anyone remembers what i said her name was because that's Gosh, I don't know what's wrong with my life. Uh, or Chesney was the first name. My bad. I'm thinking of Kenny Chesney. Um, they could, maybe you could connect with uh, this teacher and they can help you out. Like they, you teach 11th grade, also you teach 7th grade, also you've taught two wildly different grade levels. And then partner up. Like this is some cool stuff that I've done and people can shoot you some stuff on here also. That would be really, that would be really awesome. Here's um, you're at six, but I'm trying to find like some major questions. I'm at six. What? Six o'clock. Six o'clock. Okay, so we're almost Ten done. Answer. So yeah. we're trying to. All right. So I'm quick to answers. Pick out good ones, rapid so fire. Like, Here we go. Ruby B is asking. It's not a rapid fire one. I'm, no, but I'm. Oh. I'm, I'm okay. not going to tell my long, long stories like right. I always do. Um, what do you do if a kid is trying to get out of class on purpose? Like he hasn't gotten. Uh, he has bad behavior, but refu I don't know that that came across. He doesn't have like, bad how, behavior. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. It being goofy sometimes. So the, the, the questions are coming up weird, um, even though you did not mess it up. Ruby. Oh, Ruby B is asking, uh, what do you do if a kid is trying to get out of class on purpose? Like hasn't 
got a bad behavior but refuses to do their work. Um, I, I So a couple of things. One, I would sit down with that kid and try and help them through the work. And I would say, look, here's what I need from you. I realize you don't want to be here. Let's call it what it is. You don't want to be here. You want to get out of class for some reason. I'm not really sure. But right now, I think you can do well. Can you give me 10 minutes? I need 10 minutes from you. That's it. And then 10 minutes after that, we can have the conversation, figure out what's next. All right. You can most likely get 10 minutes out of that kid. Then walk him through the next part of what he's doing, right? Like you're the, like his trainer and then walk him through the next like several steps and say, can you do this next part? This is what I need to see and, and give very explicit instructions. I need three sentences. I need five sentences. I need whatever it is. I need this part of the problem answered. I need this many questions done. And then that's what it is. And then if 10 minutes, if you can give me a hundred percent, I'm going to let you go get a drink, right? You're going to have like a, a body movement break or something like that. Go get a drink. But th- even for that, I'm giving you a three minute break. You got to run out, come back. And then we're going to crush this next part because then I'm going to need you to like, that's one way. And then once that kid starts building up and starts learning stuff, maybe put him in charge of helping somebody else. Maybe give him a job in the classroom. Like, all right, I need you to collect these papers now. You're going to be my go-to guy because I know that you're getting your work done. And I know that we worked on it together. So you're already on point. Start giving them other jobs and stuff like that. I think that helps. And the other thing I would do is see if you can make them, like I say this all the time, but like I just think it's an answer to so much stuff. See if that kid will eat lunch with you one day. Have some other homies eat with you in class. Invite them to eat with you. And then just talk to them. And the more you, like I said before, the more you get to know someone's story, the more you understand what they're going through. And you can kind of like, it gives you an extra level of grace for kids. It gives you a level of understanding for students Um, or call home and say, I'm not trying to get someone in trouble, but here's, here's the situation, mom, I, you know, or, or dad or grandma or whatever it is. Like, this is the, this is what I'm saying. And I'm wondering, you know, your kid better than I do. What do you do when this sort of behavior comes out? And maybe the parent can tell you, maybe something happened. Maybe, you know, they have some kind of insight, um, and that's, that could help you as well. Uh, Alexa A is saying, hi there. I just started uh, my student teaching internship. Any advice on what I should expect or what I should take into account during this year? Um, thank you, she says. Thank you, Alexis. Alexis, I would say this, um, that be open to everything and take notes because you will not remember you will think you will remember and then you will get home and you will be so tired that you will pass out on your living room couch and then wake up the next morning and be like, holy crap, what happened? I didn't even eat dinner. I'm not saying I did that before, but I did that before. Uh, so just take notes. And I would um, ask to go, in, especially in the beginning when you're not doing so much teaching, ask if you can go see everyone else's class. And that means like not just the best teachers, but like the teachers that suck also. So you can kind of take notes as like what works, what doesn't work, what does that teacher have to offer? Spend time getting to know the students, asking them who, what teacher they think you should go see. Um, and then just getting to know students in general, because that's going to, you know, the scariest thing about teaching is not the content. Everyone loves the content. Everyone became a math teacher because they friggin' love math, right? Unless you were in TFA and they, you were an English major and they made you teach science or something like that. But uh, it's always the kids. It's always the interactions. And once you can get to know a multitude of kids, it will start building your confidence. You will start understanding student behavior better, how students work, how they think. Um, All that stuff starts coming into play. And then, like, it becomes this game of, like, how do I get this content into that brain? Um, And it helps you figure that out. So I would say student interaction is crucial. When all the teachers are hanging out at the end of the day just talking, screw that, that, man. Like, you, there's time for that and it's important, but like just being in the hallway, yo man, did a really great job in class today. Love that answer. Like have a really great night or, um, bro, uh, you were sleeping in my class tonight. Let's like not play Fortnite until six o'clock in the morning. Cause I think you're important. I want you to do well and I want to help you get there, but I need you to actually be awake in class when you show up. So those, I, that's what I would spend time doing. That's similar to what you just talked about. Same, well, same thing she asked. No, same, same girl. Said, no, oh, that's, same that's person. not a girl. Uh, Alexis A, sorry, I saw, I was thinking I was speaking to the same person as before. Um, Alexis A is asking, hi there. Dude, no, that's the same per- thing. Oh, well, my bad. Someone asked about if their student teaching and the person they're teaching with is, oh, here it is, Emily Moore. 
Oh, sorry. Alexis A, email me if you have any particular questions while you're student teaching. Also, I'd be happy to help you out, man. Uh, Emily Moore is asking, hi, Mr. Reynolds. I just started student teaching and my cooperating teacher is burnt out, super strict and not a very nice person. How can I make it through? You can 100% make it through. And this is how you're going to do it. Watch YouTube videos. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you are going to remember that you're teaching is never, ever, ever the exact thing you wanted. It's like when you start dating that dude and you thought he was the one, he's so great and nice. He does stuff like bring flowers to me. My old boyfriend never brought flowers to me and he pays for me. He doesn't make me pay for stuff. Like it just looks ideal until one day he does something weird. Like starts picking his toenails or biting his, I don't know. That was fingernails. Like fingernails or, you know, I don't know. Maybe like thinks farts are funny, whatever. That weird thing is that he does, right? Um, and then it tarnishes that, right? It's just, it's never, this got real weird all of a sudden. I realize this. It's never going to be exactly what you thought it was going to be. And that's your whole life is like your life is just never exactly what you thought. It can be great, right? It can be awesome. I would just take it as a challenge. That teacher is burnt out for a reason. Maybe they're just tired. Maybe the school sucks. Maybe they got burned so many times and like, or their wife doesn't like them anymore or like whatever the situation is. Um, get to know that teacher. Knowing adults' stories is also important. I always say this about the kids, but like, that's a good reason to get to know people. Take them out to dinner. Tell them how excited you are. Hey, man, I just want you to know. Like, I'm really, the fact that you would even take me on as a student teacher means a lot to me. I'm excited to give it my all to do everything that I can because I want this to be a great year. And I just really appreciate you doing this for me. And then, like, bring coffee in the next day. Bring, you find out they like bagels. But even though you're making no money and you got to go dig in your cushions because you've been eating top ramen for six for a dollar uh, every night, but bring them in some coffee or you find out they like everything bagels or you find out that whatever it is, like people love gifts. And so that, and I think that that just, it's not a, like a brown nosy thing. It's just like, like help people and like break down barriers. Like not so your wife thinks she's whispering, but she doesn't realize that everyone can hear her all the time. Um, and then just do your best anyway. Like when you, let, let's, let's say this real quick. When you start teaching and you want to be awesome, right? But you're nervous because you're not sure how that's going to look. Be awesome. Like look down and be like, oh, look at her. Yeah, you just started. You don't even know what it's like yet. Like you don't know how bad it gets, right? You know, yes, high, high. You got just be awesome anyway. Do a really great job because you're doing it for the kids. Like Simon Sinek always says, remember what your why is and everything else comes easier. Remember that your why is the students. The children are the most important thing to hell with everyone else. That's my answer for that one. Um, Celia, oh, I really apologize. Butler? I think that's right. I'm terrible and I apologize. Than I'm in college, doesn't right. it? Uh, I'm in university right now to become an English teacher. I am writing a paper about educational games right now. Do you have any experiences with that? Greetings from Germany. Matera. I don't know how to spell that. M-A-T-E-R-A. M-A-T-E-R-A. Mr. Matera wrote a book called, uh, it's about like teaching through gamification. It's whole idea is teaching students through playing games. Um, actually, you're going to do this. Hold on. Talk to them. I'm not talking to anybody. Hi. I'm <laughs> coming. I guess he's looking for a book. All right. This isn't going to help you in your, in your paper, probably, unless you order it right now. But uh, this book, if you email me, Remind me that we had this conversation. I'm going to send you a copy of this book. Um, and then here's the name, uh, Michael Matera. I think he called him Matthew. Uh, he wrote a whole book on this, and it's really, really great. The other, the real quick ones I use in my room, I do Quizzo all the time. Or go to a website called Sporkle, S-P-O-R-K-L-E. And they have games on there that you can um, – used for all kinds of different stuff. And it's really easy. You just pull it off. It's free. It's online. And I do it for like uh, 
kind of like icebreaker moments or like beginning of the day or like you have five minutes at the, the class, not really sure what you're going to do. Um, and you can just pull games up on there. And they even have fun games. Like I do use it in my hip hop class where they have like hip hop artists, real names. And then you have to tell me who that is. Like Ice-T is honestly probably his parents didn't name him Ice-T. And so you have to match the like hip hop artist with their like their stage name and their real name together. Those are my two quick answers for that. Amanda teaches um, is saying, uh, "What I skipped a question." Is that what well, saying? I did. Uh, my apologies. I'm so sorry. There's a lot of like so chit chat in the comments. It's not section. perfect, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> said uh, I've got the toughest kids at my school in the last period class this quarter. Advice on seating charts, handling all five at the time at the same time. So I would say, um. Difficult kids in your class, end of the day. On the board, whatever it is you want kids to be doing, put how much time they have to do it. Pre-class, here's your journal entry or whatever it is. Five minutes. Yo, you got five minutes. I'm 100% moving on in five minutes. And then stick to it. Um, talk to those kids. Dude, you're making my hair turn gray. Like, look, this this used to be all brown. And now, you know, you're making me look like Gandalf the Gray over here. No, it's sticking on my head. Um what is it that I can do so that we can have the greatest class? Like I'm trying to have the greatest class ever. Um, do things like build in incentives. Like we have a great week. We have cereal on Friday for kids that like did a really great job. And only kids that did a great job are eating like Cocoa Krispies or something like that. And everyone else is pissed off because they didn't do a good job. Do um, I, I'm not against incentives. Giving out candy to kids in class. Uh, taking them on trips to kids that do a really good job. Um, or getting to know their story as well. So you can know, like, cause look, here's the, here's the rough part. And you're not, you're, if you haven't figured this out yet, this is why they're a, a handle, a handful. They've had infinite chances to get in trouble all day. And at the end of the day, you get them. And now you have to figure out why Mr. Thompson in third period screamed at that kid who just thought he was cheating and wasn't really cheating. Now he hates everyone because he doesn't know how to deal with his feelings as he's in school still. And Gets to your class and now, you know, you want to like go nuts because he's driving you crazy. So I would take the time to get to know them. And then if no one wants to learn, if everyone's being a problem every day, just stop class. Bro, what is even happening in here right now? Like, why can't we do this? And then turn the question, what would you learn about in school if you could learn anything? Like, what do you want to learn about then? And then you might find kids that say, like, I would, I'd rather learn about sports. I'd rather learn about, st you know, statistics in sports or um, art or I really like graffiti or I like this or I like this. And then th that, then your job is to take the things that the kids are interested in and teach through that lens, right? And you'll just get – I swear to you more than anything else, you will just get better. I promise. It's like you're going to get to know those kids. They're going to get to know you. There's going to be some – the awful situation someone goes through this year, you stand up for them or stick out, like you put your neck out for them, or you help them in a situation, and then they're gonna have they're gonna have loyalty from that kid for the rest of your life. So that's that's how I would handle it. Here, there's too many to answer. Too I don't many to you answer. Could answer them all, but you should answer that one. Uh, this is the one you think I should end with. <laughs> uh, so to everyone else that didn't get a question answered, it was the not so secret wife again. No. Uh, Caitlin Brodus is asking, kids. Um, Hey, not so secret wife, do you teach too? Uh, if so, what do you teach? She teaches life lessons. Um, you know, my wife does, uh, she like, she, my wife essentially hangs out with old people all day and it's, called private home care. it's like you. private home care, right? She like takes care of people that can afford private home care. And so, um, but what that looks like is she like goes out and with like her client and all their friends and they go to diners and they go get their picture taken with Santa. And it's like, what it, what, let me tell you what my cares. wife does real quick. My wife, I think, breathes life back into uh -huh. people that feel like they're just old or no one cares anymore, no one visits them anymore, or like they just feel like something's lost. My wife is that youthful soul that like takes them out and like breathes life back in their life and she's wonderful for it. So listen, don't don't click off yet because I just saw that one do click off. Please, I have a really quick request. If I didn't answer your question, I want to help you. Please email me. I get a lot of emails, but don't let that dissuade you because sometimes I'll see something. I'm like, dude, I got to get to this right away. Um, 
but I will send you uh, an email back. I'll try and help you out as fast as I can um, because I want your voice to be heard and I want you to know that you have somewhere to get help. Also, <gasps> Hannah what Harvey asked her what her question was. She said, all oh, mine got skipped. Oh, Aww. Hannah Harvey, I, I have time for you. Ask, ask what's your question? question. I'll, I'll help you out with anything. And I don't even mean to like pander or anything like that. I feel like um, it's hard. Also, you can check out Teachers Connect and try and get some help on there as well. It's a used, uh, new site that I've been checking out and uh, I've been teaming up with. Um, and then don't forget to, like, if you have extra seats in your room, my girl, the happiest hippie gypsy teacher has like all these broken desks because her classroom was hit by, a link to by uh, Amazon yeah, wishlist. I'll put a link to her Amazon wishlist below. But like, if you have an extra desk in your room and you need help, like, Hit it up, um, and that would be awesome. So, I'm gonna, I'm waiting, I'm waiting until I answer Hannah Harvey's question. Oh, because, Hannah Harvey said her last one said any hints on the next video. Uh, next video is going to be on um, classroom procedures. Um, I have an organization video coming up, like uh, how I organize my classroom because that's something I think people really struggle with. Um, I have a video on. What do you do when your first week of teaching sucks and like you want to just like crawl into your bed with a bottle of wine? Um, which probably isn't a bad move, but like uh, then what else am I working on? What else are we talking about today? We talk about a lot. Of stuff. We talk about a lot of stuff. Um, so th those are my three that I can think of. Oh, oh how I set up my whiteboard every day, like what I put on my board. Was she asking? I'll do a simple one. Oh. Oh, we just answered that. Oh, oh yeah. Hannah Harvey, give me give me a tough question. What else we got? She said she commented on something and said you guys the guy you student talk more started later. And then she said you talked about him before. I'm not a stalker. <laughs> oh no. No, for real. Um I did the guy that I student taught with, that I student taught with, didn't start teaching until he was like in his forties. He had had a whole life, made a bunch of money on a business that he sold. And then was like kind of set for life and then went back into teaching for like the, for like all the right reasons. So he like just gave like zero shits what anybody ever thought. Um, wore a suit to school every day. His classroom was super, super on point because he just bought stuff. He was the kind of like Will Smith's character in Bad Boys, but like the old white dude version of it. And he was the greatest. Mr. Z in uh, Winslow Township High School in Jersey. He was the greatest. Um, Texas. that's it. Hannah Harvey, if you have any other questions, just shoot me an email and I will shoot it right back to you over there in Texas in a heartbeat. Um, everybody, thanks so much. I hope you have the greatest beginning of the year. If you're watching this as part of a rebroadcast, please leave your comment below. I try and get to all the comments. There's a lot of comments these days, but it does not dissuade me from trying to get back to every single one that I can. Um, and that's it. Uh, anything else? Uh, no. Do you want to tell everyone? Oh, and if you're going to be in San Diego in October on the 3rd through the 5th, I'll be at the EdJoin conference, and I'm looking forward to that. I've never been to San Diego before. I'm going to hang out with Kate's sleepy teacher. And that's it, gang. I'm going to go feed my kids now so they don't starve to death. And awkward ending. Peace. Shit, we had a hundred and some people watching that.